Just like Realme's smartphone, its first tablet is all about getting the most bang for the buck. And the Realme Pad does look incredibly promising. The Pad has a slick aluminum unibody housing a 10.4-inch display, 4 Dolby Atmos speakers and a large 7100mAh battery. The slate works with Android 11 with a reworked Realme UI for Pad. The Realme Pad is a cheap tablet at about $190 and that's why some cost-cutting choices had to be made like the Helio G80 chipset with 3GB RAM and 32GB base storage, as well as the basic 8MP snappers on both ends. Yet, powerhouse or not, it is a robust multimedia device with a large enough display, a great speaker setup, dual SIM LTE capabilities, a 3.5mm jack, a microSD slot, fast 18W charging for the adequate battery, and a clutter-free interface, of course. There is the base Wi-Fi only version with 3GB of RAM and 32GB of storage, then there is the base LT option with 3GB of RAM and 32GB of storage and lastly there is the high end variant with 4GB of RAM and 64GB of storage. All three configurations will be available in two finishes real gold and real grey. The Realme Pad feels quite compact even with its 10.4 inch display in fact I could hold the tablet like a smartphone with the my regular sized hand. It's also quite slim at 6.9mm but does feel heavy at 440g. The Realme Pad looks and feels quite premium and modern with its rounded corners and flat sides. The LTE enabled version I received for review had no visible antenna lines on the matte finished metal back panel. This is because all the antennas have been placed under a color matched plastic cape which sits above a fine silver strip at the back. This strip runs horizontally across the back through the rear camera. As expected, most of the perforations and buttons sit on the edges of this plastic cap. At the top left corner is the volume rocker with the power button on the left. Towards the center, we have two mics followed by the SIM card tray. The USB Type-C port sits on the right side, but the headphone jack is oddly placed on the bottom right corner. Most people would hold the tablet with their hand around this area the end the plug of a headset might get in the way. The selfie camera sits in the top center above the display and the bezels are quite thin. What I like about the display is its rounded corners which help it blend in well with the overall design of the tablet. There are two speakers each on the left and right sides of the device. There is no fingerprint reader so face recognition is the only way to quickly unlock the device. Thankfully it worked reliably most of the time with the tablet held horizontally or vertically. While the matte finished back panel is good at rejecting fingerprints, the display is not. Wiping the smudges off the panda glass front wasn't easy either. The box contains only the tablet, a charger and a cable. Surprisingly, Realme has not launched a single accessory with the Realme Pad. There is no word about any optional soft cases or a keyboard cover. Realme did confirm that the display does not support stylus input. The Realme Pad uses the MediaTek Helio G80 SoC which was announced in February 2020. It's a gaming-centric processor with 8 CPU cores and the maximum clock speed of 2 GHz. The tablet comes with up to 4 GB of RAM and 64 GB of storage but also has room for storage and expansion using a microSD card up to 1 TB. The higher priced variants support 4G or LTE for both data and voice calls. Communication standards include dual band Wi-Fi AC and Bluetooth. The Realme Pad has a 7100 mAh battery and supports 18W fast charging. This is the first time that Realme UI has appeared on a tablet so I was eager to try it out. It's called Realme UI for Pad and it's based on Android 11. Sadly, it appears to be a striped down version of the Realme UI implantation on the brand's smartphone. It appears mostly stock but cuts down heavily on the customization options offered on smartphones. The UI still retains the typical Realme icons throughout the interface including the settings app. But if you have used a recently launched Realme smartphone, you will find a lot missing. The good bit about a striped down UI is that it feels lighter and even with just 4GB of RAM, the software ran quite smoothly on my top-end review unit. However, multitasking was a bit of a problem. 
While apps usually opened and closed instantly, there were several instances where they crashed. Hopefully, these issues will be resolved with the software updates. And Realme already promises one coming soon that will improve overall performances. The 10.4 inch WUX GA Plus display looks sharp and gets quite bright outdoors. Colors looked quite natural, which is good. What I did not like was how quickly the Panda Glass picked up fingerprints. Something that made it a bit hard to view the display outdoors. There is no HDR support, but with a white Vine L1 certification, Netflix allows for full HD playback. There is also a four-speaker setup with support for Dolby Atmos. Audio gets loud enough to fill a small room, and Dolby Atmos feel helps make it immersive. During the entire review period, I rarely found myself plugging in a pair of headphones. Indeed, it's hard to find an equivalent offering in terms of audio in this price segment. For those who prefer a more personal viewing experience, there is a 3.5mm headphone jack. With its MediaTek Helio G80 processor and 4GB of RAM, the Realme Pad offers decent performance given its price. In our benchmark text, the tablet performed well, offering performance that's on par with that of most budget smartphones. The Realme Pad managed a score of 2.2 million in Anti-2 as well as 345 and 1305 in Geekbench, Single and Multicore test respectively. Gaming performance was not too great. The device allowed medium graphics and high frame rate, with the two goals for every other effect grayed out. The Realme Pad has 8 megapixel front and rear cameras. The camera interface is quite different from what we see on Realme smartphones, with a simpler layout and only very basic controls and settings. Still, Realme has attempted to offer some variety by including an expert mode with manual controls for ISO, shutter speed, white balance, autofocus and exposure. The tablet has a 7100mAh battery and comes with an 18W charger in the box. With regular use, which included an hour of gaming and several hours of video streaming, it managed to last a day and a half, which is quite good. Charging speeds were average, with the tablet touching 22% in 30 minutes and 46% in an hour, and completing a full charge in 3 hours and 5 minutes. The Realme Pad is a decent first attempt at a tablet in terms of the hardware it offers. With no accessories, this is a tablet intended solely for media consumption and simple communication apps, not for any serious productivity. The Realme Pad offers decent performance along with a quality display and a very impressive sound for its segment. Everyday performance is not a problem and the ultra-wide selfie camera works fine for video calls. With an LTE enabled variant, there is little to complain about. This gives the Realme Pad enough appeal provided you don't intend to do any work on it. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, feel free to share with your friends.